Hello. In this video I will go over the blower, trailer, and unloading process. This trailer size is 1000 cubic feet, inside there are no bulkheads in between the pods. The rubber blue cones down there are the aerators. Air will pump through them and pressurize the tank. When the product is almost empty the weight is lifted from the cones, and causes them to vibrate against the trailer. This is the blower. Air intake filter canister. Sight glass for checking the oil level. Should be at least in the middle of sight glass. This is the breather pipe. On the back left side and right side you have greasing nipples for the bearings. Output air fitting. With a flapper style check valve. Will protect blower from any back pressure. Or product. In case of sudden loss of power to blower. Safety pressure relief valve or pop off valve. And you will also have a second one on the trailer location usually at the top of pressure relief pipe. The pop off valve on this blower is a 15 pounder. And the one on the trailer will be set higher. I think that one is a 20 pounder. They protect the trailer from exploding. Now you have muffler. That hooks up to your air output fitting. Next there are 3 inch hot hose. A second muffler. Second check valve for back pressure and product precaution. Up here the pressure relief pipe. And second pop off valve. Pressure relief valve. Or blow off valve for tank. Here is where the pressure will exhaust. I usually leave it open when driving with a fine or coarse heavier type loads. You may get a little pressure build up when it is closed. Now. If I'm doing a lighter powder dusty type load, I would close it while driving. Because the trailer is filled to the top and the load is more spread out. If you have to get on the brakes a little hard the powder dust could slide forward and some may exhaust out the relief pipe. If valve is open. Here's your bypass valve. Between tank pressure and line pressure. Back to air pressure supply line. It will split between the aerator air supply line and product air supply line. Here's the main aeration valve. Some trailers will have separated aeration control valves for each pod. This trailer doesn't have them. I will come back to that later in the unloading section. Here's the airline supply valve. And on the bottom of the pods are your product control valves. And the pressure gauges. Okay let's start the unloading process. I got my hose hooked up to the right pipe. Have all my aerator valves open. I have my line air supply valve close. But you can leave it open if you don't want to start building your tank pressure. When blower is first started. Bypass valve is shut. My blow off valve is shut. And my hot hose is hooked up to the blower. Ok now we're going to start the blower. First thing is hold the brake down and you will put the truck in drive. Turn PTO switch on. Some trucks may have one like that. Now put the truck back in neutral. Take foot off brake. And set the cruise control to hold RPM speed. This truck is set for 790. Some trucks will be set higher than that. Look at that 103 outside it feels like it. Now the tank pressure is building up in tank. If you didn't shut the airline before starting the blower go ahead and shut it now. We are going to be pumping between 10 and 12 psi today. We can't go past 15 pounds per square inch. Because the safety pop off valve will open up. So this will give us a 3 pounds bumper to catch any possible pipe plug ups. Ok the tank is building up pressure by air being forced through aerators.
Once tank gets up 12 psi I will open up the airline valve and let air flow through product line for a couple seconds. Product line gauge should remain on zero or drop to zero. This will mean the product line and silo pipe is free of any plugs. Now, I will open my product valve slowly. If you have your product valve open all the way, and your tank gauge start to rise past 12 psi, back off on your product valve some, until tank gauge levels off. Closing airline a little bit to keep PSI up. If my tank gauge starts to lose PSI, I will close off my airline some forcing more air through the aerators. If my tank pressure starts to increase I will open my airline to provide more air through product line. If my airline is all the way open and my tank PSI is still increasing, close your product valve a little bit until it stops rising. You will never want to close your airline all the way up with product valve open because you will lose the airflow pushing the product forward and you will plug up. So right now we're just looking for that sweet spot by making little adjustments between your product valve and airline valve. We are in that spot now. Some trailers you may have the product valve half close, more or less, and your airline wide open. Just think about how the air is flowing. So the air is being pushed through the aerators, and aerating through the product, loosing it up so it can flow out at the same time pressurizing the top of the tank pushing product back down through the product control valve. Now the product is aerated with air and can flow. Now we need to push it forward by using airline forward pressure. You will always need forward airline pressure when product valve is open and there is still product pumping through. If you lose it you will plug up. Flowing good. You always want to be 100% sure you are pumping into the right silo pipe. A lot of the customers may receive different types of products and will have multiple pipes. They may be label with the product name or number or, sometimes not, the name or number could have rusted away or faded away. There may be a switch or control panel by the silo pipe, or against the wall, near the silo, that you have to turn on. Sometimes it's label bag house or dust collector. Just ask customer if there any switch you need to turn on before you start unloading. 
Some places may have a lever that pushes up on a switch when you hook up to the pipe with your hose. It may be out of adjustment and you may need to use a bungee cord to hold lever high enough so it can press the button. Tank gauge has increased PSI. I will open my airline a bit. Bag house or dust collector is a filtration system for the exhaust side of the silo. The bag house will have a bunch of bag filters inside. Jets of air will pulse inside the bags from time to time to blow the dust off. There also might be a shaker that shakes the filters this will also help keep dust from building up on the filters. The bag house system is a common one, but there are also a canister style filter collectors, and there are probably other different types of filtration systems out there. Some may even have a little bit of vacuum when turn on. As long as it evacuates the same amount of air being pumped in, you shouldn't have a problem with unloading. But if exhaust filtration system is not on, or working properly, maybe the filters are clogged up you will get a lot of back pressure build up in the silo, and this will give you a lot of problems with unloading. You can tell when you got back pressure, your airline is open and all product valve are close, and the line gauge will very slowly lose PSI. It should drop down to zero PSI quickly. Also every time you try to opening product it will seem like it's trying to plug up. Gauges are looking good. You can technically start unloading any pod first. Some drivers may start with the middle one or back one and work their way up. I like to start with the first one and unload front to back. This way if the truck breaks down, while unloading or if the U-joints bearing, give out on drive shaft, of the blower, maybe the customer can't take the whole load, whatever the reason, and you need to drop the trailer, this way, most of the weight, will be in between your landing gear and back axles of the trailer. This trailer has an airbag suspension system and the air needs to be exhaust before dropping a loaded trailer. There may be a box like this one on your trailer, or maybe a pressure release valve, by your tank pressure gauges, that will exhaust trailer's airbags. Some may be automatic and will drop when you release the trailer brakes. This trailer is not, so I need to pull the pressure relief valve, and the valve on the bottom is, for the lift axle, when trailer is empty. If you forget to drop the airbags, as the trailer sits there, the airbags will lose air pressure with all the weight on them and slowly push forward and up on the landing gear, binding them up and possibly causing damage to them. The product is still flowing good, still in between 10 and 12 psi on tank side. I could have raised up a bit on my airline valve, to slowly bring tank pressure back up, and then tap it down a bit, once tank gauge reached 12 psi.
you can get more life out of your hose by propping it up like this with a old piece of hose whenever doing coarser type of product like this A coarser load will concentrate right here, at the curve and eat away the hose faster. By propping up, the product will be more spread out. Okay, going to pull up on the airline, pushing more air through my aerators and raising my tank pressure. I should have pressed down on my airline a little bit, by now. Uh-oh. Starting to lose control. Oh no. Will I know the ledge? We are flirting with disaster. To get it back under control, first close the product valve almost all the way, or close all the way, then open up your airline all the way, let air flow for a few seconds, and then slowly open product valve a little bit if you had it close.
slowly open product valve more. Looking good. Product is flowing in tank pressure slowly dropping. Opening product valve all the way. My tank is back to 12 psi and under control. Here's another way to get it back under control. Close your product line. Close your main aerator valve. Open the airline. and open the bypass valve. Your tank pressure gauge will start to drop. Close bypass valve when tank drops to 10 psi and open the aeration valve. Then slowly open product valve. You can also use the bypass valve for this. If doing a powder dust type of load, most likely the blow-off pipe will be filled with powder dust. Remember, I recommended earlier, that you keep the blow-off valve shut when transporting powder dust load. That type of load is more spread out and will slide around easily. When, I am done with first pod, and before I start on the second pod, then I would close the product valve, open my airline valve all the way, close the main aeration valve, then open the bypass valve, the tank pressure will start to drop, and now close and open the airline valve a few times. This will clear out most of the powder from the blow-off pipe. You want to close your main aeration valve whenever you open the bypass valve because product may get into the aeration pipe and hoses. Over time it will start to build up, possibly plugging up the aerators. If you left main aeration valve open, when bypass is open at same time. not going to let this pod run completely empty because this trailer doesn't have the separate aerator shut off valves for each pod like on this other trailer if i let this one run empty i will lose most of my aeration for my next pod so i need to keep some weight on the aeration cones and that will hold back most of the air so i can get good aeration to my second pod
If you had the separate aeration valves, for each pod, you would let it run empty, then close the aeration valve for that pod. The next pod aeration valve should be open. So now you are getting maximum aeration for second pod. Then when that pod is empty, close aeration valve for the second. The third pod aeration valve should be open. Now you will be getting maximum aeration for your third pod. And if you have a fourth pod do the same thing. Back to this trailer. Closing off my airline to raise tank pressure. Opening my airline. Checking where the product level is with my mallet. Want it just about where that red line is. If the trailer has separate aeration valves, let it run empty. Okay, finish my first pod for now. Closing that product valve up, and moving on to next pod. If your trailer has aerator valve, for the pod, close it after pod is empty. Your line gauge and tank gauge will drop PSI, when empty. Now close the product valve, and you will have to build tank pressure back up. Close your air line until you reach 12 PSI, and then open air line back up, and then open next product valve. On the second pod, doing same thing as first, going to raise air line some to increase tank pressure. If starts to go past 12 pounds per square inch, we'll open air line a tap, until I find spot to maintain 10 to 12 psi. On other trailers you may have product valve only half open plus or minus, due to different sizes of the butterfly product valve, and then fine tune your air line so you can maintain 10 to 12 psi. I'm going to cut, to the end of this second pod. But all I'm doing the whole time is making little adjustments to my airline valve from time to time, maintaining 10 to 12 psi on my tank side. Before I cut to end of second pod, going to do two simulations. The first one will be what to do if you lose your blower power while pumping off, and the second simulation, how to unplug trailer. This has worked for me 6 out of 9 times in the last 14 years. If the truck breaks down, PTO disengages, blower drive shaft universal joints give out, hot hose comes undone, pop off valve vibrate loose, whatever the reason, while unloading, and you lose your blower air power supply. Quickly, close the product valve, close main aeration valve, open air valve, open bypass valve, the remaining tank air pressure, could clear out the product line and silo pipe of product. If it works, you can disconnect hose, now if needed, and not make a mess, or not be plugged up, once blower is up and running again. When you get plug up, both line and tank gauges will shoot up to 15 psi, and the pop-off valve will open, making a chattering sound. So now we need to get some air, past the plug, once we do that. 
It will re-aerate the product and it will start to flow again. Going to do that by opening and closing the product valve. Alternating air pressure back and forth. Tank to plug. Tank to plug. When the product valve is open it will also blows up the product inside the tank. And when you close it the product inside will drop back down. Causing the trailer to bounce a little. This should help too. Because the hose is hooked up. From the tank to silo pipe. Is getting shook from the bounce. Loosing up product enough. So air can get through. The first thing you do, is close the product valve. The sooner you do that, the better chance you are going to have on plugging it. Next close your main aeration valve, and open air line valve. Your bypass will remain close. Next you will open blow off valve. There's two way to go about opening blow off. I usually just open it. But you can also turn blower off and then slowly open blow off valve. If you don't want to make a big dust cloud. Once tank pressure gauge. Drop to 0 PSI. The dust cloud will clear up. If you decided to turn off blower. Go ahead and turn back on. Your line gauge will be at 15 PSI. Now open product line for a few seconds and then close. Open for a few and close for a few seconds. And your line gauge will decrease PSI on the opening and increase PSI on closing. Keep opening and closing product valve. Until line gauge pressure starts to decrease on the closing. Keep product valve close. Then. And now you will be unplug. This will not always work. If it doesn't work. Open bypass valve. Relieving air pressure from product line. Turn off blower. Both gauges should be at zero. First let customer know what's going on. That you may make a mess. Next unhook your hoses. Empty them out of product. Also take your mallet. And bang on the silo pipe. Until the product starts to flow back out. Once hose and silo pipe is clear. Hook hose back up. Turn on blower. Slowly. Close. Bypass valve. Made small adjustment on. Airline valve. To maintain 10 to 12 PSI. Back to second pod. Almost finish. Checking level of product with my mallet. If you have the separated aeration valve, for that pod just let it run empty. Then close it. Then close product valve. Build up tank pressure back to 10 to 12 PSI. By closing off airline. Then open airline back up. And next open third product valve. Since this trailer doesn't have the separate aeration valve, not going to let run empty. Just close second pod and then open third pod.
This load is going to take about 1 hour and 45 minutes to do. But how long? Is going to depend on 5 things. First, type of product. Second, on how much air you blower is putting out. For example, this truck is set at 790 RPM. If it was at 900 RPM, I could take off 20 minutes, off my time. Pumping at same PSI 10 to 12, would get better product aeration, and better pushing power, as long as the same amount of air being pumped in silo, is being exhausted out silo at the same rate. Third, on how high, of PSI you are pumping at, if you can keep between 13 to 14, you could take off maybe another, 10 to 15 minutes, but the chances of you plugging up is much higher. Fourth, length of pipe pumping through, if has any twists or bends, or a sideway pipe, on way up to silo, this would add time to pumping. Okay, on this third pod, the product level is just above, hose storage pipe, going to close product valve, and open back up, my first pod to finish emptying. Now, if your trailer has, the separate shut operation valves, for each pod, go ahead and empty this last pod, and then close your product valve, that trailer should be just about empty. So now, open all your aeration valves, close air line valve, build your tank pressure back up, somewhere between 8 to 12 pounds per square inch, your trailer should be vibrating, open air line, and then, open first product valve, line and tank gauges, should start losing, pressure rapidly, if empty, if not wait until it does, and just repeat process for the next pods, but this time leaving all aeration valves open, close product valve, close air line, build tank pressure back up, open air line, open product valve, lip gauges drop PSI, and repeat for last pod, and once I'm done with this driller without separate aeration valves, I will show you the final clean out process, same for both trailers. Back to determine how long it will take to unload. Fifth reason. Fifth, and most important, silo exhaust filtration system, bag house or dust collector, talked about this earlier. If not working properly, letting air pressure out at the same rate, as pumping in, you will get a lot of back pressure build up in silo, and could turn a normal 2 hour pumping time, into plus 4 hours. But when you notice it's taking forever to unload first pod, or it seems like it wants to constantly plug up, just close product valve. After a few seconds air line should decrease PSI at a steady rate, if not, get with customer. Let them know what is going on and maybe they will check out the filtration system. Another company I used to work for, the blower was set at 1200 RPMs on truck side, and I'm not sure what PTO ratio was, but it pumped out a lot of air. We needed it for the type of product, which was called Pebble Lime. The size of the pebble was about the diameter of a dime to a quarter in size, took a lot of power to push it. So whenever I did any other type of product it will only take about 40 minutes to an hour to unload, as long as the silo exhaust filtration system, bag house or dust collector, relieve the pressure just as quick as being pumped in. Sometimes I would have to set my RPMs much lower on the blower, so the bag house can relieve pressure just as quick, usually when I did cement loads. If you have a powerful blower, you may need to lower your RPMs at different plants. This first pod is just about empty. I can hear the aerators starting to vibrate a little, and also hear the tank air pressure start to rush through product air line. So I close the first pod for a second, and then open back up. The tank gauge pressure started to drop quickly. Close back up first pod product valve. That pod is empty and I will come back for any leftover dust in final cleaning process. And open second pod. I could have let the tank gauge run to zero PSI, and then build pressure back up. 
and then open second pod, but didn't want to wait for pressure to build back up. I use this trailer all the time, with same type of product, so I know when it's empty. Once, you get used to your trailer, and on how different types of products like to be pumped, you may find little shortcuts, here and there. You can now hear the vibrators. That's coming from the first pod. Because it is empty. And I still have some product weight. On the aeration cones inside trailer. For second and third pod. That will help shake loose any crumbs left over. While my second pod. Is empty. Alrighty. Going to cut out about 5 minutes. Didn't adjust any of my valves. In that time, tank pressure will be a little higher. Five minutes later, second pod starting to go empty. The tank gauge is starting to lose PSI. So this time, I let the tank pressure get too low. We'll build my tank PSI back up by closing my air supply valve. second pod. They are both empty. Once tank PSI is back up, I will open my airline all the way, and then open last product valve. need to close my aeration valve about halfway or so because I am losing too much forward airline pushing power pressure into empty pods need to hold some back if I didn't adjust the aeration valve the line gauge PSI will get real jumpy so that's how you know when the product is not flowing well and you will need to make adjustments to aeration valve or and adjustments to the product valve
Third, pot is going empty. Now open my aeration valve back up. And I will close the product valve. And build tank gauge PSI back up. And now, you would do same thing with the other trailer. With the separate aeration valves. This will be the final emptying process. Watch. empty. All your product valves, and aerator valves, are shut, and the reason why I open my bypass, so won't be too dusty, when I turn off the blower, and open blow off valve, it's going to dust some this time, because the silo is filled to the top, usually, it doesn't, just be sure your main aerator valve is close first, before opening bypass valve, Open blow off valve, and then close bypass valve. Now you are all set for the next load. Just disconnect. Hot hose and product hose. I hope, I explained it good enough. For the newbies out there, who decided to enter an exciting new world of pneumatic tanks. Thanks and be safe.